What's up guys, this is Dino here and today I'll be adding the next part to the what if Ash was born in the Dragon Clan series. If you are wondering why the so frequent upload, this is because I will not be uploading uh, for about 1 week or 10 days, something like that. I will be busy with some stuff so I won't be getting the time to write the script, record the video or prepare the slides for that matter. But the next time I come back, it will be with a brand new story. So stay tuned for that. One week or 10 days max. And uh, before we begin this part, there is a little game I would like to play. This is name your favorite second stage Pokemon. For example, as you can see in the picture, my favorite second stage Pokemon is Toracat. So what you need to do is you need to go into the comment section. You need to put in hashtag Pokemon then give a space and write the name of your favorite second stage pokemon this is just a game to like boost the algorithm a bit so uh, if you want you write or else it's all good and with that all out of the way we dive right into the story what if ash was born in the dragon clan part 5 in the last part we saw ash challenge whitney and whitney at the golden road city gym and thanks to the intel from Vincent, Ash was able to capture a narrow victory and win the plane badge. Now we pick up where we left off. After resting for the day at the Pokemon Center, Ash was ready to set off for Acutrix City. But he decided to pay Professor Oak a visit before leaving. Professor Oak was of course visiting Golden Road City for his daily broadcast. He went to the Golden Rod Radio Tower to meet the professor and told him all about the Pokemon he had caught. Pupitar's, Pupitar's unique appearance and Latias' growth were also brought up. He also, at this point, he also linked his Pokedex to the professor to Professor Oak's ranch, meaning that any extra Pokemon he catches from here on now will be automatically transported to Professor Oak's ranch. As they were talking, the Pokemon Egg Ash had began to shake and he immediately took it out and right before their eyes it hatched into a trico. Professor Oak was shocked and delighted to see that the egg was a Hoenn starter all along and Ash can scanned it using his national decks and was overjoyed to find that this was a grass type Pokemon. That's right, not a water type, grass type. Professor Oak suggested that the national park which was located right between Acutric and Goldenrod would be a great place for Trico to get used to the climate. So Ash alongside his new Pokemon went to the park and Trico was really comfortable with the surroundings. Despite being newly hatched, it had a great appetite for battle and started picking fights with the wild Pokemon in the grass. And then Ash heard an announcement. Upon inquiring, he found out that the park was hosting a bug catching contest with trainers allowed to use two Pokemon and they were permitted only one capture. The trainer with the best capture at the end of the contest would be awarded with a sunstone. Ash deciding that it would be really cool to add a sunstone to his existing collection of moonstone decided to enter the contest. He'd, he thought that it would be a great learning experience for Trico and Ash chose Onyx alongside it in order to balance out the type disadvantage Trico would have against bug types. They encountered a Butterfree and Trico started to battle it immediately, with some occasional assistance from Onyx. But before Ash could catch it, they heard a lot of panic and commotion on the other side of the park. Some wild flying Pokemon appeared to have invaded the park and were attacking Pokemon and trainers alike. Ash scanned them in his Pokedex to find out that they were Skarmory. Ash realized that because every trainer here was a bug catcher, their Pokemon wouldn't stand a chance against the steel flying types. So he decided to try and hold them off all by himself. Onyx was able to intercept two of them and although it was having some trouble, this gave the park rangers necessary time to evacuate the trainers and the bug catchers. But soon more and more of the flock started to attack and Ash was forced to send out his entire team to hold them off. A slightly larger Skarmory which was the leader of the flock turned its attention towards Ash and Trico as it dived into a drill pack. Just then Nidorino leapt out of nowhere and used a horn attack to catch the Skarmory off guard, stopping the drill pack in its tracks. Both Nidorino 
and Rico started battling the Skarmory but the size, speed and strength of the leader was proving to be too much for the duo. It swatted away Nidorino using a steel wing and tried to connect with another drill pack on Trico. Ash grabbed onto Trico and jumped out of the way to save Trico from the impact and this resulted in the moonstone in his back to roll out and roll towards Nidorino. A bright flash of light covered the area as Nidorino made contact with the moonstone and when it was over, Nidoking emerged ready for round 2. Now being even in power, Nidoking was able to go head to head with Skarmory. After a tough battle, he was able to bring down Skarmory but with but it continued to battle despite being too tired to fly and more of the flock started to swarm on Nidoking who was also tired after such a long and hard battle. Ash knowing that as long as their leader will be standing, the flock will continue to attack. So he throws his heavy ball which specialized in catching steel types. And this worked as soon as and this worked as the leader as the leader's karmari was captured soon enough. And after this the flock immediately retreated, not having a head to lead. The heavy ball disappeared as the Pokemon was sent to Professor Oak's ranch, just as he, just as he said it would. Ash then arrived at Recutric City but found out that the gym leader was busy dealing with Team Rocket, so he decided to explore the city. He went to the kimono house and met the dancing trio. They challenged Ash to a 3 on 3 battle and the prize being a Sooth Bell if he wins. Sooth Bell is an item which helps to calm a Pokemon and make it friendly. Ash decided that this, this would be a handy item to have so he accepted the challenge. He sent he sent out Pupita, Gibble and Trico against the evolution trio of Flareon, Jolteon and Vaporeon. Gibble and Pupita were, are basically bros right now and they are very adept at battling together. So they stomp through Flareon and Jolteon while Trico is having a bit trouble dealing with Vaporeon despite the type disadvantage despite having the type advantage because it's newborn so all three soon join to take it out giving ash the clean sweep and clean sweep victory and the suit bell with it ash then visits the burnt tower a historical site about which he had read but the priest of the tower refused him the entry saying that a thug had entered the tower in search of the legendary beasts and until the gym leader comes back no one was permitted the entry due to safety reasons Ash tells the priest that he could help and although the priest is unsure at first he allows Ash to enter after seeing his gym badges although he said that he will be going inside with Ash alongside Ash. Ash and the priest enter the tower and Ash spots a pokemon that he has never seen before. Ash thinks that this is a dragon type but the priest connects him saying, corrects him saying that this is a common misconception. This pokemon is actually Dunsprance and it's a normal type. It has been living in the tower ever since its birth and knows every part of the old structure. The priest asks it to show where the intruder went and does and Dunsprace leads them to a much lower level of the cave. Sorry, tower. They spot a man wearing odd looking clothes. The priest refers to him as Yusin and tells Ash that he this man was supposed to be the gym leader of their city before he betrayed them and joined Team Rocket. Yusin wants the priest not to mention his name ever again and also wants them not to interfere with his plans or it won't end very well for them. Ash tells the priest and Dunsprace to stay back as he will handle this. As Yusin sends in his Kadabra and Ash goes with his newly evolved Nidoking and despite being at a type disadvantage Nidoking proves to be too much for Kadabra and it takes it takes it out with a mega horn. However, all this commotion leads to the legendary beasts, them being Raikou, Suicune and Entei to be awoken and all of them immediately free in opposite directions. Yusin is absolutely irate at, irate at this and tells Ash that he will pay dearly for thwarting his plans before he escapes. Due to, due to the battle, most of the tower is destroyed and the priest tells Ash that having lost it, its home, Dunsprance wa wants to travel alongside Ash as it enjoyed watching the battle and wants to watch some more battles. However, when Ash tries to throw a Pokeball, it deflects it using its tail. So Dunsprance is not an official member of Ash's team yet. 
for now it's some sort of a traveling partner if you will so ash and dunspence arrive at the gym the next day to challenge the gym leader morty morty greets ash and thanks him for helping out with usain he also tells ash about his ambition to meet all the legendary pokemon of the johto region ash tells him that that's a really respectable ambition and also tells more also asks morty more about usain morty tells morty tells him that here's a deal if he manages to beat morty in the gym battle not only will he tell ash all about not only will he give ash the gym badge but he will also tell ash all about the history of the two towers them being the burn tower and the bell tower ash agrees to this as the battle begins ash send, sends out gibble and morty goes goes with ghastly although ghastly tries its best it's no match for gibble and is taken down with a bite attack Haunter is out next for Morty and is able to use the cover of the shadows to evade all of Gibble's attacks. A powerful shadow wall connects on Gibble, landing a critical hit before it could go down for a dig and try to dodge it, and this results in Gibble being knocked out. Ash goes with Latias as his second Pokemon. Haunter tries to retreat into the shadows once again, but Latias' psychic senses render its attempts useless. Haunter fires off a shadow ball and Latias counters with one of one of her own, showing that she had learned the move after her battle against Miltank. Latias' shadow ball overpowers overpowers Haunter's and causing causes it major damage. Latias then follows it up using her mist ball, which also lands taking Haunter out. However, realizing the immense danger that Latias poses to his to his team, Morty orders Gengar to use a destiny wand before it vents. and this results in latias going down with hunter the final battle is between ashes pipitar and morty's gengar with a sudden move gengar goes for a focus blast right of the start and which pipitar barely manages to dodge this puts ash on high alert as focus blast would, could probably probably take pipitar out with one hit pipitar goes for a rock tomb but once again the focus blast thrashes through the rocks and heads straight for pipitar Once again Pipitar dodges the attack but this time Morty anticipated it. He orders a shadow wall which which lands square on causing moderate damage. Ash decides to take advantage of this and orders a payback attack. Gengar however disappears into the shadow and Pipitar passes right through not landing the hit. This sequence continues as although Pipitar is able to dodge focus blasts it's con- it's constantly bombarded with shadow balls. And due to Gengar disappearing in, into the shadows again and again it's difficult to land a significant hit on it ash deciding to get creative orders pipitar to use rock tomb on itself basically creating a mini fortress of some sort gengar takes the bait and goes for a focus blast which hits the rock head on but pipitar takes minimal damage as a part of the rock shatters this leaves gengar off guard and pipitar takes this opportunity to go for his new move This is Dark Pulse, which lands on Gengar before it could retreat into the shadows, and this results in Gengar almost being knocked out. Pipitar then charges at Gengar full at full force, and Gengar, due to being majorly slowed down, is not able to get out of the way in time. So Morty orders Gengar to use Focus Blast, and Ash tells Pipitar to use Endure and keep charging. This works as Pipitar charges through with Payback Attack after absorbing the Focus Blast. and this super effective attack knocks gengar out giving ash the victory and the fog badge morty thanks him for a ama- for an amazing battle and the next day they both sit down to talk about and morty tells ash all about the two towers and the history of the legendary pokemon them being ho oh and lugia now ash is halfway through with four badges down and four to go and guys this is where we will end this part thank you so much for watching once again uh this will be the last upload in a week or 10 days so stay tuned for the next upload which will be a brand new story because i decided that i will put a hold on ash waking up on time series because uh to be honest i'm like burnt out from that from making the story and i need something fresh you guys need something fresh right so i'll be uh preparing a new story for you guys so stay tuned for that